next dignitary is Professor T. G. Sitaram. He is my IIT alumni colleague, and his introduction is simply that whatever we are talking about now, he has already initiated that in IIT Guwahati, Guwahati, when he was a director of Indian Institute of Technology. So we will be listening to him based on his hands-on experience. So he is really walking the talk. He himself is a quite closely related to the IIT Rurki for getting various awards. And with very young age, he had got the C.V. Raman Young Scientist Award of Engineering way back in 2002. He is interested in a number of issues, including Indian Geological Society, Geotechnical Society, and also in terms of making the campus a relevant living laboratory for the students to learn from. Professor T.G. Sitaram, the floor Thank is you. Open. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar, Dr. Rajendra Sinde. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Honorable Sri Prakash Javadekar ji, Dr. Rajendra Shinde ji, Dr. Sasrabudhi ji, and all the vice chancellors of the universities and other dignitaries who are present on this platform. First of all, let me congratulate Green Terry Foundation, in particularly Dr. Sinde, who initiated a nationwide movement to equip the youth in the 75 universities at the first set with the active engagement in localizing sustainable development goals in their campuses. As uh, Professor Sasrabuddhi is saying, from 75 to 7,500, we have to reach and it can be reached very quickly because such a network is possible. I also thank all the members of the Smart Campus Cloud Network to join this national launch of carbon neutrality in 75 universities. Uh, friends, uh, we are celebrating the G20 presidency. Uh, the policy priorities for the G20 is one earth, one family, one future. So we have only one earth. So we need to take care of that. I think Dr. Sindeji has started the right time, this movement among the universities so that we also contribute in our own way for the mother earth. Uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, out of uh, 17 of them, 11 spells out very clearly sustainable cities and commodities. The ultimate goal of the net zero is to limit the global warming to below 1.5 degrees centigrade. As uh, Dr. Sindhya was saying, this is real. This is not a number which we just uh, play with it. And uh, to avoid the worst impacts of the climate change, what we should be doing. That's what we need to think about and create awareness and also develop plans and execute them. Friends, achieving net zero will require a combination of technological advancements, policy changes, societal shifts, and even the mindset of the individuals, along with individual actions and choices. It is a very crucial step, ladies and gentlemen, in transitioning towards a sustainable future and addressing the urgent issue of climate change. It's a difficult, you know, very difficult to balance between the amount of carbon dioxide emissions produced and the amount removed from the atmosphere with the ultimate goal of limiting global warming and avoiding the worst impacts of the climate change. The Earth's climate is changing rapidly due to human-centric activity. That's all we all are the contributors. So mainly, I, even Dr. Javadekar was highlighting that it is not India is contributing, but still we are a very responsible country. We are actually doing the best what can do even to contribute to the world's problem. It's actually more of a USA and developed countries problem, but we are contributing to change that scenario. The Earth's climate is changing rapidly. There is no question about that. So we, how, how are we going to do this? So these impacts in turn are affecting even economy of India, a health of our fellow citizens, ecosystem, and ultimately, you know, the bearing the brunt of these consequences is our people. We, we have been declared as the largest populated country just in last week by the United Nations. So we are in, you know, we have crossed 1.4 billion crossing China. So I think we need to do our bit 
and that's what we are all agreed to do with Dr. Sindhe's uh, leadership. We are going to do this in the universities and I think we can scale this up to a large numbers of universities and uh, to address this climate change crisis, it is very necessary to stabilize the climate and avoid the worst impacts of climate change. So the alternative energy is one, one aspect of that. And where, you know, wherein, you know, we could use the electric vehicles, okay, and autonomous uh, vehicles where, where you can, you optimize the energy, you know, consumption in our vehicles. And uh, also, this is not just a mere one, one aspect of it. So we need to look at new kinds of engineers who can bring changes. So that's where, you know, All India Council for Technical Education is looking at, so that's where we need to change the curriculum, which is suitable to bring the that zero into our curriculum. Previously, as Dr. Sindhya was highlighting, as a director of Indian Institute of Technology, Gohati, we had introduced a compulsory course to all our undergraduate BTEC and B design students on the sustainable development goals. Because very, very important and apt to educate the students about what are SDG goals. How are we going to mitigate this? So in the second year of BTEC and B design, a compulsory course was introduced at IIT Guwahati. More than 1,000 students used to take. And more importantly, this course was taught by nine different faculty from nine different departments. You know, it's truly multidisciplinary in that. So AICT's Clean and Smart Campus Award, I think many speakers before me mentioned, which was aimed to seek engagement with all the stakeholders, primarily the student community to draw their attention towards immense scope and potential that technology offers for abstract objectives such as cleanliness, sustainability, and environment. The rising use of technologies, especially IoT, robotics, cloud and automation, and uh, data science have also immense potential to remodel a campus into a smart campus. This is very important. Not only we are making achieving net zero, we will also make our campuses smart. So these smart campuses can minimally help in forward delivery by optimizing the use of inter alia energy, water consumption. Water is one aspect, ladies and gentlemen, we need to address it very, unless and until our all six lakhs villages are self-sufficient in water, we will not be a developed nation and also we will not be able to achieve the net zero. So water is a very critical aspect and mission water should be our focus also in this uh, aim towards bringing net zero. Smart campuses, again, come back to smart campuses, which would construct smart citizens, those who are future ready for the smart cities. That's where AICT can contribute to create a smarter India because we are very strong in, um, in the STEM areas and we are already third in the world. So we could become number one. So AICT, one student, one tree, and AICT grant for augmenting infrastructure in northeastern region, Gainer, are also notable projects uh, in the direction, in this direction of net zero. So the Gainer is also a very important project which you have to see where, you know, we try to bring in the, uh, the disadvantaged institutions in the Northeast to also in the forefront. So this is the uh, ACT has done uh, successfully and implemented this uh, in the last couple of years. Despite COVID-19, unprecedented scenarios being tipping point for the EE for the electric vehicle sales or automakers and consumers, which will need to accelerate their adoption. If you hope to meaningfully limit climate change, reducing carbon emission from vehicles is a critical. And currently, as per global report published by the McKinsey, says road transport accounts for 13% of the global carbon emissions. So we need to do more on that. The decade between 2025 to 2035 will determine whether the industry can keep cumulative carbon dioxide emissions under control. The energy and transport sectors can work together. That's where you know we need to bring curriculum. ACT will do that. Whether it is on smart charging technologies or electric vehicles, Introduction I mean, in many of these. So there must be a coalitions which can be formed to develop clean supply chains for the creation of low carbon battery solutions that reflect the full potential of a circular economy. Ultimately, the world's regulators and policy makers may have to intercede adopting an ecosystem perspective with cross-border goals 
and meaningful timeliness for everything from a number of charge points needed for a trajectory of carbon reduction. So that means there are many things we have to do as a collectively. So networking and working together is a very key. Without this kind, you know, networking and collaborations, it is unlikely that the uh, from uh, from going to the net zero it will be a very big challenge. I would like to mention here that the concretization is next, next uh, like most essential, but that is uh, you know very very important. So we need to look at. Uh, many of the newer technologies uh, which are sustainable and which we need to adopt. So achieving net zero will require significant changes in how we produce and consume energy, as well as broader societal and policy shifts are very essential. So I feel research and development and innovation should be very key component of all these in the institutions. So R&D and innovations should be the focus of our uh, institutions. So the research and development, whether it is in efficient building systems or industrial electrification or waste to energy and such projects should take the lead in our institutions. And I hope under the aegis of the Ministry of Education, AICT is continuously partnering uh, in these initiatives and activities related to environment and sustainable goals among students or faculty members and all in all the AACT approved institutions. Uh, a world record was also recently, just last week, was created in the Climate Clock Assembly, partnering with Energy Suraj Foundation, where once uh, we, where, uh, we had actually uh, asked the students to create the climate clock. That means basically assemble the climate clock. And it was a world record, both in Asia and also Limca India record was also created. And uh, I think this is with jointly with Swaraj, uh, Energy Swaraj Foundation, who is Professor Solonki from IIT Bombay, who was instrumental in carrying out this. So with these few words, I once again congratulate Dr. Rajendra Sindhiji for taking this initiative to launch the 75 carbon neutral net zero universities. And I wish and I hope that this 75 will go into 7,500 and we, we will include all of them into our network and do well. So I wish the program a very good and successful one. And we are going to be part of this with you. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Sitaram. Uh, it was uh, such a assuring, reassuring your words. And those are coming from the person who has already done the work in a campus. Mm -hmm.